everybody, the fun's about to begin. Come on. Hi there and welcome to Art Zone. I'm Nancy Guppy here at Georgetown Stables and we have got a real fine show for you this week. Take a look. It's uh, about music, it's about art, it's about dance. Northwest World Fest gets a local launch. When I told you I was a motorcycle stuntman for the city, that was not the truth. Rocket men take off on Amazon. I'm a rocket man. Katie Miller considers the changing face of Seattle. Urban environments to me are still in some way like this new and different experience. Mopop memorializes Chris Cornell. And fresh music from Alpha Yaya Diallo. We'll begin with Katie Miller, whose solo installation at Mad Art this past summer offered a poetic perspective on our fast changing city. I think how buildings are built is fascinating. I definitely find beauty in scaffolding and layering of linear qualities. I am an interdisciplinary artist that primarily works in site-specific installation. I was really drawn to rapidly changing urban environments and wanted to figure out a way that I could talk about them and the temporality of the, the environment we're living in. Even though I've lived in the city for 18 years almost, urban environments to me are still in some way like this new and different um, experience, uh, especially as Seattle is transforming. Most of um, my work over the last couple years has been about um, creating a structure cut out of paper, so it's, it's a void, it's an empty space. The image itself is empty, but yet we see it. Um, so I'm just kind of interested in how absence plays an important role um, in talking about a quickly changing city. As you know, buildings get taller and the neighborhoods get denser and we're you know, traversing construction sites, how do we interact with our, the world around us differently? Do you feel smaller and more sort of constrained by it? Or is that exciting and amplified? I was really thinking a lot about how buildings that are built today are really rigid and all the lines are straight and everything is very perfect and there's parallel lines and perpendicular lines. And I've just really kind of pursued a visual language um, to talk about the superstructures and the architectural frameworks that are around us. In my installation at Mad Art, The Presence of Absence, um, I used primarily um, hand-cut paper, wood. I used some matte mylar um, for its translucency and some parchment. All of the paper pieces are hand cut using a number 11 X-Acto blade and a straight edge. I cut on a wall, so I spend a lot of time doing this. And each piece takes about 20 hours to cut. As each small section is cut out, it releases and then over time reveals the larger image. And, and that last cut is always really satisfying because that's when the paper falls down and the space is revealed. 
In a lot of my projects, I use light as a material, and often that's applied light that I have a lot of control over. Because this exhibition was in the summer, um, I wanted to really focus on the natural light in the space and how it would interact with the works. And one of the big challenges for me was figuring out where the light would be strong, how it was gonna move over the course of the summer, and what happens when it's a cloudy day. So there was this additional layer that changed throughout the day, depending on when you visited. And for me, that was a, a new way of working because I didn't have control, but I felt like it was another layer that was really beautiful and dynamic. During times of day when the sunlight would project through the paper structures, that image would project onto the floor and almost feel um, like a building or a cityscape in its own in this like soft glowing light that as the sun moved, the projection would get longer and more stretched out. We all have opinions about change and it takes a while to adjust to them. But I think for me, I just, I hope that people see what, what's interesting about this like moment in time that is a moment of transformation where we see the inside of buildings, we see scaffolding, we see structures being built and it won't always be like that. Eventually these buildings will be complete. So what does it mean to interact with those and be more aware of um, the qualities of our surroundings? Learn more about Katie and her upcoming projects at MillerKatie.com. Well, Seattle loves a festival, and whether you're into film, music, theater, boats, or seafood, there is probably an event dedicated to celebrating just that thing. Well, there is a brand new festival in town. It's called Northwest World Fest, and here with the scoop is the director and founder and executive guy, Abdul Ndi. Hi, man. Nice to see you. And nice to see you, too. A pleasure. Um, so, starting a festival, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, congratulations. Thank you so Not much. Not for the faint of heart. Thank you. Um, Tell us the basics. What is uh, Northwest World Fest about? Well, Northwest World Fest is uh, bringing the, the world culture mm -hmm. in, in Seattle. It's uh, about music, it's about art, it's about dance. But this first audition is focused on music and food uh, from West Africa to East Africa. Mm -hmm. And we have a band from Burkina Faso, we have a band from Guinea, and we have a band from Zimbabwe. Wow. Your, um, your background is uh, tech and engineering, but you have this other side to you, which is, of course, artistic and music and a DJ. So what is it that made you want to bring, focus so much of your energy on making this happen? What's important about Northwest World? Fest? Okay. Well, it's a good question because I don't want to <laughs> spend all day on a computer. So after work, I want to relax my mind. Yeah. I love music, uh, it's a passion. Uh, the reason I'm pro promoting music because there was a gap and uh, there's so many uh, talented musicians in Seattle who are looking to expose themselves. Mm -hmm. With this one, I know you said it's focusing kind of West and, and East Africa, but you want to go much, to the whole continent. I want to yes. go the whole world. Right. I want to bring the world culture in Seattle. Yeah. I want to bring the Tibet dancer from China. I want to bring the dancer from India. I want to bring the, all, the power all, all over. All around. So that's, all the, over. that's the world focus. That's the world focus. It's yeah. not just about the music, it's yeah. about the world culture. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the, the musical guests that will be in the first. Uh, we have a guest coming from Burkina Faso. His name is Mamadou Diabate. Mm -hmm. He's from Burkina Faso, a talented balafon player. And balafon instrument, it's one of the oldest uh, instruments in Africa. Uh, back in 14th century. Oh my God. So Mamadou uh, Diabate is from the Samla tribe in Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. And we have Alpha Yaya Diallo from Guinea also. And we have Nabi Kamara from Guinea, who also is a big balafon player. Mm -hmm. And we have Ben from uh, Mbira player from Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. now based in Seattle. And some of these artists, I mean, they're, they're like monster rock stars, are they not? Correct, <laughs> they're monster rock stars. <laughs> they're really yes. huge, big. Yes. And you play the music as well, you play guitar. I play music for fun. Yeah. I have acoustic guitar where I get together with my friend yeah. and we jam. So yeah. I'm not a professional musician, but I feel like my friends, the musicians, need help. So they need somebody like me to 
to bring them on a stage. So people coming to the festival, uh, someone like myself, what do you hope we will take away from this first, first one? Good music. Good music. Uh, food. Mm -hmm. Dancing. Yep. And explore. Uh, I'm going to invite a few local artists from Seattle mm -hmm. to expose the art. By the way, all that hitting on the roof, that is, um, what are these? These are like chestnuts. chestnut it's the chestnut tree. tree is dropping these all over the place. Um, so I'm curious about your own kind of internal heart and soul. What is it that's driving you to, to want to bring art, culture, everything to the world and, and from all parts of the world? What's important about that to you? Well, first of all, the culture is important in everyone's lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, without the culture, there's no human being. Mm -hmm. So we need a culture to, be, to, 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 to exist, to mm -hmm. co connect. Mm -hmm. and, and, and music, it's a universal language. Mm -hmm. And the art is a universal. Yep. You can see art from Africa. You can see art from China. Yep. It's the same drawing, it's the same communication, same message yeah. in a different way. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason that I feel like it, there is a gap mm -hmm. and there is a missing uh, cultural uh, event in Seattle. Yeah. And you were there to fill it. To fill it. To <laughs> You're fill stepping it. in to, to fill it. To, to fill, fill it. it yeah. To bring that. To give the opportunity. I, I say, for the local yeah. artists in Seattle to yeah. to expose themselves. Do you think um, the African communities here in Seattle will um, experience things that they've never they've never seen before? They've never experienced before? Yes, Do I you? think so. Uh -huh. There's over almost uh, forty thousand African community in Seattle. Wow including Ethiopian, Somalian, and yeah. West African. And this event will bring them feel at home. Feel in at the, home? Feel at home. Uh -huh. Just being in that room, uh -huh. they will see the music from their country, and yeah. they see the music from their origin. They feel like home. There, yeah, there's a sense of, of also be, being built up, built, right, right. Or being seen. Seen, right, it's correct. So important. But in Seattle. In Seattle, yeah. seen in Seattle. in Seattle. Yeah, you can use that line if you want to. <laughs> well, uh, this is great. Uh, Northwest World Fest uh, presented by Yaleen Production happens Saturday, October 20th at King's Hall on Beacon Hill. Learn more about the festival, including how to get tickets at yaleenproduction.org. Thank you so much. I'm Thank so you. glad you're doing this. Thank and I you. want you to stay tuned because in just a few minutes, some hot shot musicians from Northwest World Fest will be performing right here on our show. I'm excited about that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Pleasure. Pleasure. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. A Boeing Airline 747 exploded over Seattle today and crashed into the Puget Sound in view of the entire city. I can't say anything conclusively yet. This would appear to be the result of a particularly sophisticated projectile fired from ground level. And every rocket man in the city, maybe the whole country, is going to be out of a job. When I told you I was a motorcycle stuntman for the city, that was not the truth. I'm a rocket man. The Soviets had their rocket men, we had ours. Idiots on rooftops all over the nation, dizzy on hydrogen fumes, and waiting for the threats of tomorrow. What threats are those? Ah! Giant robot! How do we save people from life? It would be, in effect, a jobs program paying less than minimum wage. Technology seven decades out of date, answering to a bureaucracy so remote nobody can trace the headquarters. Gotta have some faith. Go! Oh. I feel safer today. Rocket Men, a locally made web series featuring a cast of fabulous Seattle actors, is now streaming on Amazon Prime. Well, as we promised you earlier in the show, we have some incredible music this week. Alpha Yaya Diallo and Nabi Kamara. So great to have you guys here. Thank you. And so you came down from BC, Vancouver. Yes. And you drove across the West Seattle Bridge, yes. right? Nice, nicely done. Now, I know you po you have played together for a long, you've known each other a very, very long time. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, over 20 years. Over 20 years. Yeah. What was the first instrument that you played? as a child? Well, I grew up um, listening to different kind of instruments. Yeah. For Guinea, it's very 
like cultural, it's a very diverse, like the Malinke people, the Mandang, the Fulani people. So mm -hmm. I'm from the north part of Guinea, there's different instrument. Mm -hmm. So we learned, uh, I, I start with, uh, you know, drums and I play More some percussion. Yes, yeah. And uh, then I picked up the guitar. Well, yeah, when, did you, when did you pick this up? Se at seven years old. You were seven years old? Yeah, seven years old. Wow. Then I start, uh, uh, I start playing, uh, imitating the kora, the instrument. Which it's kind oh, of harp. Oh yes, and, the uh, yes, yes. Yeah. This, what's this here? What's this called? This is a. This is the balafon. Balafon. Uh, it's it very traditional instrument. Actually, it was uh, been part of our culture before even the guitar. Yeah. And the balafon is uh, from the Manding, uh, from the the Susu, Actually, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we've been. Uh, then we start incorporating the balafon with the, mm -hmm. the, the guitar. So mm -hmm. we call that world music today or Afro pop or something it like all, that. Yeah, right. Know, it all kind of comes together. Name. Right, right. <laughs> and so you guys, when you're playing together, what do you like playing? What, is, what do you like about each other's playing? Because you're super in sync. You really. Well, uh, we, 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 there's a common sound that everybody play in West Africa. Common basically. sound, okay, yeah. yeah. Because, uh, uh, remember, there's different kind of balafons. Mm -hmm. The pentatonic balafon, the big one with big golds, mm -hmm. and came from the Burkina Faso, from uh, uh, Ivory Coast, the mm -hmm. north of uh, Ivory Coast. Then there's this one, it's uh, the regular balafon, but I'm telling you, uh, this was not part of uh, our music usually, right. and, uh, but we started incorporating and tried to tune it and make it work with the guitar. Oh, got it's, it. It's beautiful. Uh, and, and, and this is, you've had, he's had this for, Nabi, you've had this for a long time. Long time. Long time. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's, it's a beautiful piece. Well, we are so excited. I know you're going to play two songs for us. And what's the first song you're going to do? Well, the first song, it's Jarabi. It's a love song. It's a very uh, sweet minor mm. as well. As, and uh, the second one is called uh, Dunia. The world. So, first one is love song. The first one, and the second one is the world. Well, it's a world. How uh, how beauty is the world too? Ah. It's like different kind of uh, love. It's just showing uh, how the world look today. Excellent. Well, are you ready to do this thing? Yeah, absolutely. Are you ready? Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Alpha Yaya Diallo. <laughs>
gotta be my feeling, gotta be my feeling, gotta be my feeling, na na. Gotta be my feeling, gotta be my feeling, gotta be my feeling, na na. Gotta be my feeling, gotta be my feeling, gotta be my feeling, na na. Catch Alpha Yaya Diallo at Northwest World Festival happening Saturday, October 20th at King's Hall on Beacon Hill. Hi, I'm Eva Walker and I'm curating this calendar of events. First up, I'd like to tell you about the return of KEXP and Iceland Airwaves, Reykjavik Calling. Dive into the sound of Iceland with selections from their most popular bands, Vuk and Gita. On stage, local duo Navi will join Icelandic musicians. The evening is run by DJ Alex Ruder, and this event takes place on Saturday, October 13th at KEXP. Next up, a popular local book just got an update. Jake Udy's 100 Things to Do in Seattle Before You Die is a bucket list book with something for everyone. It features ways to experience everything from food, sports, local celebs, and of course, nature. Get yourself a copy and meet Jake at his book signing on October 21st at Costco. Moving over to the Center on Contemporary Art, or COCA, for their latest exhibit, Where Do We Belong? This group's show is a response to Trump's zero-tolerance immigration policies. Artists will show work that is deeply personal, diverse, and highlight the significance of the time we're living in now. Check it out through November 17th. Thanks, Eva. By the way, you can check out Eva's band, The Black Tones, at Tacoma's Gritty City Sirens Tim Burton Ball on October 27th, and listen to Eva every Saturday night from 6 to 9 as the new host of KEXP's local music show, Body Oasis. Now, before closing out, we want to congratulate the Seattle Symphony for winning the Orchestra of the Year Award at the 2018 Gramophone Classical Music Awards in London. From all of us, thank you. Thank you. Way to go, y'all. We also want to thank Mopop for commemorating the late great musician and poet Chris Cornell with a beautiful life-size bronze sculpture that was commissioned and donated by his wife, Vicki Cornell. With an overflowing hometown crowd of family, friends, and fans in attendance, the statue was unveiled in a public ceremony on Sunday, October 7th, followed by a screening of the riveting 2013 Soundgarden concert at the Wiltern Theater in Los Angeles. We sure miss you, Chris. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week.